Okay, question number 14 from C34, June 2014, International A-Level. Uh, question about vectors. Relative to a fixed origin O, the line L has a vector equation R equals minus 1, minus 4, 6, plus lambda 2, 1, minus 1, where lambda is a scalar parameter. Because that's a position vector on the line. And this is a vector which is a direction of the vector itself it's a direction it's a, it's a vector which tells us the direction that the vector is going in okay points a and b lie on the line l where a has coordinates 1 a 5 and b has coordinates b minus 1 3 find the coordinates of a and coordinates of b sorry find the value of the constant a and the value of the constant b okay so now point a has coordinates 1 a 5 so the vector from O to A is 1, A, 5. Okay, and we need to find, okay, the value of lambda. We need to find the value of lambda at the point A. You see the value of lambda, you see what, what happens with when you have a, a vector. Here's the vector say this is the vector um okay the line l okay the, and the position vector this is say this is the origin o this represents a point on on the line okay this represents a point on the line okay so that's the vector oops that's the vector that takes you from the origin to the line so that would be representing this minus one minus 4 and 6 okay and this is or part of this okay this for example could be the vector 2 1 1 and this is a scalar of it so for example um, if you want if when lambda is 1 you'll end up at this point when lambda is 2 you'll end up at this point when lambda is 3 you'll end up at this point when lambda is 4 you'll end up at this point when lambda is minus 1 you'll end up at this point okay so the, the lambda tells you where along the line you're going to end up and this gets you to the line. It's like there's a train going and you've got to get to the train first. So this gets you to the train. Okay. And then the number of lambdas that you have tells you how far along the track you're going to end up. Okay. If it's negative, you're going to go backwards. If it's positive, you're going to go forwards. That's one way of thinking about vector equations of a line. So basically at the point A, lambda has a particular value. Okay. And we need to find the value of lambda at A. Okay. So what we can say is the point A uh, the point a satisfies this equation okay there's going to be a value of lambda a for which this equation is satisfied so we can say at a okay we can say that our vector equation which is minus one minus four and six be very careful about your signs here. it's very easy to make a mistake just leaving a minus sign and mess up a whole vector question so you have two one and minus one is equal to the position vector of a there's going to be a value of lambda for which you're going to end up with one a and five okay so from here we can find out what lambda is for example if i take the i components i'll have minus one plus two lambda is equal to one so two lambda is equal to two so lambda is equal to one so we know at a lambda is equal to one okay at a we know now that lambda is equal to one so therefore we can say that a will be given by you can say a is going to be minus 4 plus 1 times 1 minus 4 plus 1 times 1 which is minus 3 so a is equal to minus 3 and similarly we can say at b is lambda will have a different value okay b is a different point so you know say this now we've said that for example this is a if that's one lambda this is a okay that's the the position vector of a the position vector of b is going to be with a different value of lambda so we can just do the same thing again we can say minus one minus four and six plus lambda times two one and minus one is equal to now we're going to put the position vector of b we know that ob the vector o to b okay is going to be given by b and minus one and three Okay, so this is going to be b and minus 1 and 3. And we can use any of these two to find what lambda is. So, it's, for example, minus 4 
minus 4 plus lambda is equal to minus 1. Therefore, lambda is equal to minus 1 plus 4, which is 3. Okay, so we know that. Let me just make some space here. We know that at B, whoops, we know that at B, okay, at B, lambda is equal to 3. So therefore, we can say B is equal to minus 1 plus 3 times 2, which is going to give you 5. So we have A equals minus 3 and B equals 5. And those are the solutions uh, to part A of this question. Question part B. Okay, so now we know A is minus 3 and B is 5. We've got to find the vector A to B. So before that, we need to know what O to A is. Okay, which we can find out now because we know what the value of what was missing from it is. Now, O to A was 1, A and 5. So it's going to be 1 and minus 3 and 5. That's O to A. And O to B, well, we know now what the missing part of that was. Okay, O to B was B and minus 1 and 3. So it's now 5 and negative 1 and 3. And we got to find the vector from A to B. Now, the vector from A to B, um, if you think about this is A and this is B. Okay, we want to find the vector that takes us from A to B. Okay, that's what we want to find, that vector. So we need to know, in relation to the origin, well, we do know what O to A is. Okay, we know what O to A is. We know that vector, O to A. And we also know this vector, O to B. Okay, and we have to find the vector from A to B. So we got to go the opposite of O to A, which is minus O to A. And then we got to go O to B. So it's like O B minus O A. So it's this minus this. So the vector from A to B will therefore be O B minus O A. Okay, which is going to be 5 and negative 1 and 3 minus O to A, which is 1 minus 3 and 5. So you have 5 minus 1, which is 4. You have minus 1 minus minus 3, which is minus 1 plus 3, which is 2. And you have 3 minus 5, which is negative 2. So there we have our vector from O to B. That's no, A to B. So there we have vector A to B, which we wanted to find. It's 4 and 2 and negative 2. Okay, there's part B done. Okay, for part C, uh, we're told the point C has coordinates 4, minus 3, 2. So that means O to C is 4, minus 3, and 2. And here we've written down the results from the previous page for OA, OB, and AB. So it says, show that the size of the angle CAB is 30. So let's make another a diagram, um, CAB. Okay, so let's just make a line and another line. And uh, yeah. Okay, C, A, B, so the angle is here. This is A. Let's say this is C. And let's say this is B. So the angle C, A, B is 30 degrees. Okay, so basically the angle C, A, B is the angle between C, A and, okay, the angle between A, B. So A to B and C to A, or A to B and A to C. Okay, um, it doesn't really matter which way you, you look at it. Although I, I reckon if we did A to C and A to B, it would be better because there will be tail to tail and the answer will come out 30. That's how it should look. Because when, they, when you do them tail to tail, okay, then A to C and A to B, the angle should be 30 degrees. Okay, because the angle is when the angle you find in the method we're going to use now is when the when these are tail to tail. Okay, um, so if it didn't come out as thirty, it would come out as one fifty. We can just subtract from one eighty, but I'm sure this will give us thirty because A to C and A to B will be tail to tail. Okay, so A to C and A to B. Um, so we need to find the vector from A to C. We already know what A to B is. We need to find what this vector is. Okay, now A to C is going to be. Um, Let's say this is O. 
So A to C is going to be the vector from there to there. So you got to do minus OA plus OC. Okay, so the vector from A to C is going to be OC minus OA. Okay, OC is 4 minus 3, 2. 4 minus 3, 2, as we're told. And O to A, as we were told, or we calculated one of the missing parts, 1 minus 3 and 5. So you end up with 4 minus 1, which is 3, minus 3 plus 3, which is 0, and 2 minus 5, which is negative 3. Okay, so we end up with, this is a 5 there. Okay, yeah. So that's the vector from A to C. So we know that A to C is equal to 3 and 0 and minus 3. Now we are ready to find the vector or the angle between A to C and A to B. Now, I think I need some more space here. So let me move this down. Okay, the angle between two vectors can be found by using the fact that the dot product of two vectors will always be the same as the magnitude of their so the product of their magnitudes times the cosine of the angle between them when they are drawn tail to tail. Okay, so if I wanted to find the angle between them, I'll use the fact that the cosine of the angle between them is equal to the, prod the dot product over the product of their magnitudes. Okay, so first of all, we've got to find the dot product of, so like we say, let A is AC and B is AB. Okay, so we have those two vectors. So the dot product of those two vectors, so we can say A dot B is going to be 3, 0, 3, C, 3, 0, minus 3 times dot product with um, A to B, which is 4, 2 and minus 2. Okay, that's going to give me 3 times 4, which is 12, plus 0 times 2, which is 0, plus minus 3 times minus 2, which is plus 6. So you end up with 18. Okay, and so we can say now, uh, I think I need some more space still. I have to go on the next page for this other stuff. Let's just bring this stuff down here. Deal with that later. Okay, so now we know that we now find the dot product of this. So we say uh, we now we need to find the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. The magnitude of A is going to be the square root of 9 plus 9, which is 18. And the magnitude of B is going to be the square root of, you're going to have 16 plus 4 plus 4, that's the square root of 24. I'll leave it in this unsimplified form. We don't really need to simplify it because we can just stick it straight, in, straight into here. So we've got the cosine of theta is 18 over root 18 times root 24. Okay, let me just make that look a bit neater. So you have going to have 18 divided by the square root of 18 oh man this pen the square root of 18 times the square root of 24 okay so what does that give us so be in degree mode yes so we're going to say shift cosine 18 over the square root of 18 times the square root of 24 okay and hopefully this is going to give me 30 degrees yes it does so this is equal to so we can say that therefore theta is equal to 30 degrees so we've shown that the angle between them is 30 degrees okay so there we have the answer to this part of the question that's part c Okay, next part D says find the exact area of the triangle CAB giving your answer in the form K root 3 where K is a constant to be determined. Okay, so let's look at this diagram here. In fact, let's take this diagram uh, after getting rid of some of these things that I don't need. Okay, let me just get rid of some of these things. I'll redraw some things on there down there to make it look neater. So I'm going to take this diagram and bring it down there quickly and we will then be able to answer the next part of the question more easily okay so instead of keep keep moving up and down I can just bring the diagram here and it will give us less of a headache okay so now we want to find the exact area of this triangle a B 
ABC. So let's close the triangle. Okay, we don't know what these angles are, but I know that this angle is 30 degrees. Okay, so I know the, the vector from A to C, and I know the vector from A to B. Okay, I know those two vectors because I, I just used them now. The vector from A to B was um, 4, 2, minus 2. That was 4, 2, minus 2. And the ve vector from A to C, which we just found up there, was 3, 0, minus 3. And I also know the vec I also know the magnitude of the two vectors. So I know the, the magnitude of the vector A to C okay, was root 18. And the, the, ah, and the magnitude of the vector A to B come on, pen. Sorry about this, guys. Okay, so that's root 18. And we also know that the magnitude of the vector from A to B, okay, was root 24. We found that in the previous part of the question. So that's all I, ne I need. I know that this length is root 18. I know that this length is root 24. So I can use the fact that the area, okay, of a triangle, okay, if we don't know the vertical height, is a half times one side times another side times a sine of the angle between those two sides. So I know what these sides are, and I know the angle between the two sides. So I can say the area is equal to a half times root 18 times root 24 times the sine of 30 degrees. So let's show our steps here. Okay, because we want to give the answer in, in third form. So you're going to have a half times. Now this is like 9 times 2, so that's 3 root 2 times and this is like um this is like four times six yeah four times six so this is going to be two root six yep yeah, times sine 30 which is a half so you end up with okay so we have here now um got to simplify this now we've got two root six times a half the the the, the twos cancel here so we're left with um, a half times three, you've got three over two times root two times root six, which is root 12. Okay, and this will be three over two times, this is like root four times root three, okay, which is two root three. The twos cancels again, you're left with three root three square units, because it's an area. Okay, so there's our answer for part I think that's D isn't it now yeah part D okay